freaking cold. You got frostbite yet? In the frigid Canadian north, young pilots seeking adventure. That's why all those guys are up here. Battle the elements in World War II planes. Oh, on this episode, Dwayne's on a military mission. Get your shit together and get going and get done. And he's taking no prisoners. I will not use this crew. And a rookie is put to the test. I was landing directly into Sonic. Oh. Under your hats, boy. Over here! Hey! Come right in. Come on. Come on. Senior manager Dwayne Hicks is determined to make his mark at Buffalo Air. And the planes he intends to do it with are Buffalo's 50-year-old Lockheed Electras. The Electra amazes me. Never really been on one, never really operated one until the last 45 days. And I've put a lot of hours on the Electras, and I'm very impressed. It's fast and efficient. After a successful mission to Canadian Forces Station Alert near the North Pole, Duane's landed a second contract. Okay. And the military is here to prepare for tomorrow's flight. That's good. This time, Buffalo will be hauling gear to one of the most northerly places on Earth, Resolute Bay, Nunavut for a Canadian Rangers training exercise. The Rangers are a Canadian Forces Reserve made up of 4,000 civilian volunteers. The first load with the, with the snowmobiles in will be par all parked outside. OK. Electra Captain Ray Weber goes over the game plan. Because we're only going to do one load that day because of the logistics, if we take time... Why, why one? Because we're not going to have enough time, duty time, to do two loads two in there days. with the loading and offloading. Why, so, why, how long is loading going to take? Two, three, four hours. You're kidding me. No. Ray's scheduling is, okay, we're going to have breakfast, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And my scheduling is, we're going to have the airplane loaded, and then possibly we'll have breakfast when, you know, you should come to work, have breakfast before you come to work anyway. Dwayne has no other options. Either way, like, you're going to take this stuff right in the hangar, I understood. No. Ray, his co-pilot Sean Barry, and flight engineer Luby Lubash are Buffalo's one and only electric crew. We need a five-ant circuit breaker, and then we'll go. This is crazy. They may have thousands of hours in the plane, but Dwayne doesn't like the way they work. They're just f***ing around. That's all they do, f***ing around. Why do they consistently want to make it long days and make it hard for themselves? And Buffalo Joe shares Dwayne's concern. Program like this. Uh, itinerary. itinerary. Yeah. Well, like what we, how yeah. we intend to do. Yeah. No, no, no. How I oh. intend to get you to do it. Oh, yeah. you're working for me. I'm not working for you. Oh. Yeah. No, no. So I'll tell you how we're going to do it. I'll tell you how I'm going to do it. Oh, okay. Because I know <clears throat> what I need done. All right. Everybody had their own theory on how we were going to do this. That's why you need somebody in control. So I'll give you a guy's timeline, okay. and you follow the timeline rather than you guys. Well, the only the only so variable that we saw Joe, was tell us what the, we're get, what the load. We're trying to tell you, I don't. Because you don't get your shit together and get going and get done. Well, the only problem you we know, got here right that's now. That's what I'll tell you. No, 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 Go look at the mess outside. You leave the mess here. When did you get back at this? We unloaded this uh, Thursday night. OK, now this is Monday morning. I've been looking at okay. this since Thursday night. I'll clean it up. OK. Right now, we have one crew. So if any one of the three of us uh, take a notion to get sick uh, or get mad at Joe and, and quit or go home, then the airplane is grounded. And that would be very bad for Dwayne and his contract with the military. We'll see you in the morning. Yeah.
The next day, the military arrives with 20 snowmobiles for Resolute Bay. The Electra crew is on the job, but Dwayne is already frustrated. So, you know, they're just starting to load now. It's supposed to be airborne at 8 o'clock. We're not going to get out of here till noon. They're just not ready. They're not preparing themselves like they should be for an Arctic freight operation. <laughs> luby has got to run a good assignment. He didn't get any lunch. He didn't get breakfast, so he's going to run it. I have nothing against Ray, Sean, or Luby. It's just something. I don't know what really the right word for it, but it's just a motivation thing. A complacent crew isn't going to help Dwayne turn the Electra into Buffalo's flagship plane. So he's ordered up the training of a second crew. But the new crew isn't ready for action yet. So on this mission to the furthest reaches of the north, he's flying with Ray, Sean, and Luby. With the cargo hold filled, the Electra is finally on its way. It's over 1,500 kilometers from Yellowknife to Resolute Bay, just on the edge of the polar ice cap. Dwayne thinks all the freight is on board, but it seems he's left something behind. Well, last Tuesday, we got a transfer case to go to Resolute Bay, so I rode on it, Resolute. You'd think that Hicks would know where his stuff for the charter is. The freight is for Ozzy Courage. Just take that dragon all the way. Originally from Tanzania, East Africa. Now the go-to guy in Resolute Bay. We run a hotel, a construction company. We do the fuel delivery, a little bit of everything. In Resolute Bay, there is one man that you can go to and get everything you need. There's one fuel pump, one truck, and he operates it. And if you offend him, you're sewered. There's no way you can get the work done. You're, you're working really on his goodwill. And not bringing Ozzy his freight could turn goodwill to bad. 100, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. there and I'm happy as hell unloading the airplane. Here you go, Oz. Here you go, Ozzy. And then he goes, well, where's the differential? The freight in the Buffalo cargo terminal is a differential for Ozzy's fuel truck. Apparently, a differential come in and I had no idea. So I loaded the airplane fully under thinking I had all Ozzy stuff. We were expecting some components uh, for the drivetrain to come up. However, it got uh, mishandled in the all knife and uh, didn't get on the plane. I told him, don't you worry about it. I'll look after it. I'll get it here. I don't know how I was going to do it, but I just told him I'll get it here. You say you're going to do something, you come through with it. I'd have taken money out of my own pocket to ship it there. I don't care. It's my mistake. A costly mistake. Dwayne arranges to get Ozzy's part on the next scheduled flight to Resolute. Then, while the crew grabs lunch, Dwayne throws them a curveball. We have to go to your brief. Take a barrel of fuel into Eureka. Wait. Either on the tail end of this or on the way up. <laughs> An additional fuel haul contract that Dwayne is just springing on them now. I had the chance to run some barrels of fuel into Eureka. The research base at Eureka is right between Resolute and Alert. Since we were going up to Alert empty, it would have been nice to drop into Eureka, take a half a load of barrels in, and then next trip up, do the same thing. When did this happen? It's always been. No. That was the first I'd heard about it. He thought we should have known about this all along. Well, if he didn't tell us, there was no way we were going to know. Go up to alert one day, because it's so, we'd just do one trip, right? Dwayne makes it sound simple. Drop off the barrels, continue to alert, 
load your contacts, come back. Next day, do the same thing. I had all that all planned out to do so, and I they fought me tooth and nail. What kind of a load of barrels? Are they? Fifteen. Fifteen. <laughs> We're getting better, everybody. <laughs> Bookmark <laughs> averaging. <damaging. laughs> Our airplane is limited to the weight it can land with. So by doing a short trip, we don't burn off enough fuel so we can't land with a large load. If we'd have planned this before we left home, it would have been something that we would have worked toward. Ray and I get frustrated with the fact that he doesn't come to us first. Dwayne didn't consult the crew, so now he has to forfeit the additional job. I had to lose some lose revenue for the company. I didn't feel good about it. The crew disappointed me. Dwayne's eager to make a big impression, but if he continues like this, he's liable to have a mutiny on his hands. Resolute Bay Nunavut, one of the most remote settlements on Earth. Buffalo's electric crew is leaving here to pick up gear from the military station in Alert. As far north as Resolute is, Alert is even farther, 1,000 kilometers north of here. You too. Pause the way. Here. In fact, Alert is only 800 kilometers from the top of the world. Buffalo 117 Lockheed Electro. Traffic advisory five miles to the northeast of Resolute Bay Airport. Alert has been a military station since the Cold War. It's now run by the Canadian Air Force, still as a high security communications post. Dozens of heavy wooden sleds, known as Cometics, have to be loaded into the Electra. The Cometics and snowmobiles are needed for a Canadian Ranger's training exercise. One of three sovereignty operations the Canadian Forces uh, conducts in the Arctic annually. This year we're going to be staging out of Resolute Bay and conducting sovereignty patrols onward. There are currently over 4,000 volunteer civilians from the north serving as Canadian Rangers. This operation is vitally important to all Canadians. The Rangers patrol the vast Arctic with only snowmobiles and cometics and report any unusual activities. Cometex weighed just under 300 pounds each. The military had guys, they loaded them onto a forklift, they run them up the airplane, their guys skidded them in, put them where we told them to. It did take a couple hours to load, but uh, not as long as it could have. Back in business. Crew takes off for the return flight to Resolute. Dwayne has worked them to the limit of their duty day. So the rest of tonight's job, the offload, will have to wait until morning. In Yellowknife, Rampy Tyler Sipos has finally made it onto Buffalo's pilot roster. Good LFR going down as a freighter. 
Um, it's my first revenue flight, so kind of excited. Tyler's been at Buffalo less than a year and has gone from the ramp to the cockpit faster than most. The one thing in my mind when I came here is I'm going to do the best job I can. I'm going to work the hardest I've ever worked. His effort was noticed, and Tyler was given the chance to prove himself on the DC-3. Oh, yeah. We kept on getting pushed back, and then it just starts getting on your mind. You're like, holy Christ, like, let's just get this thing done. You're just like, whatever. When it happens, it happens. It finally did happen. A week ago, Tyler flew his pilot proficiency check ride. Yeah, thanks very much, Yeah, cool, good. Yeah, good. The test that certifies him as a DC-3 co-pilot. Nice, big, fat DC-3 PPC on my license. Uh, bigger smile on my face. Now, he's officially a DC-3 co-pilot. His captain this morning is Devin Brooks. Five after five and the sun's coming up. This place isn't right. You all set? Yes, sir. Tyler's never flown with Devin before. You're flying with these captains that are excellent, excellent pilots. You don't want to look like, you know, the biggest rookie of life. All right. All right, your show. He'll need to prove to Devin that he can handle the 20,000 pound plane. B1, B2, you're flying. Gear up. They're heading to Hay River, a 45 minute flight across Great Slave Lake. A revenue flight, man. You're all checked out. There you go, yeah. Made 15 bucks in 45 minutes. Oh. <laughs> On top of his base salary, Tyler now makes a whopping 18 cents a mile as a DC-3 co-pilot. Hey, you got 500 feet to your altitude. On this flight, Devin's letting Tyler do it all, including the landing, which isn't going to be easy. Because they closed runway 13 and 31 due to construction, he had to go on the shorter strip. You're going to want to make sure you're on your speed. Roger. And uh, I was landing directly in the sun. Right to the sun, you gotta love that, man. Eh? Pressure. The sun, the shorter strip, first revenue flight, all these things, all those factors. You don't have time to sit and think, okay, get nervous about it. You're just there, you're doing it. Watch your speed, remember you got a real light airplane right now. All right. Devin's kind of a strict guy. You wanna make sure that, you know, you don't disappoint him. Remember, you're buying me beer if I have to take control. Roger. You have your airspeed pegged. You want to focus on the runway, but hard to judge it with the sun in your eye. 200 feet to altitude. Check. Get your butt right in the middle of the runway. Looking good here. 89, 82. Follow are all yours. 90 knots. Don't get too low. There you go. There you go. Fly it down. Stop him. Pitch back. Pitch back. Hold it. Holy. Very, very, very nice landing. It was smooth. There was no bouncing around, no nothing. It was just a nice landing. I can't see much, but I have her now. Roger, you have control. I guess I gotta buy you the beer. <laughs> it felt good, though, really good. All Tyler's practice has paid off. And maybe a little bit of beginner's luck, too. <laughs> First flight, revenue flight, he did excellent. Greasing an airplane on his first landing, man, oh, man. But when they fly back with a 6,000-pound payload, Tyler will need more than beginner's luck to ace that flight. In frigid and remote Resolute Bay. Bring her down a little, just nice and slow. Buffalo manager Dwayne Hicks is hands on as the Electro crew offloads the Comatics they picked up at Canadian Forces Station Alert last night. Hey, hang on there. Whoa. This way a little bit. Yeah, a little more. Those loads were the ugliest loads I've ever seen. Yeah, we're down. It's easy for 10 military guys to load it up, but shit, I needed 
eight of Ozzy's guys and ourselves. Hey, Bush! 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 <laughs> the comatics are needed for an upcoming Canadian Ranger training exercise. Dwayne and the crew are supposed to pick up one more load in alert to complete the job. But there's a catch. A blizzard went through alert. The real Arctic weather came through. So even though it's sunny in Resolute Bay, the crew is weathered out. Dwayne wasn't too happy with the waiting game. He just wants to get it all done. Yep. But Dwayne's also thinking ahead. He starts working on a bid for a new electric contract. We're a couple to preheat and two to fly up, so we're in good shape. We're, we're just... The military is building a brand new warehouse in Resolute Bay. It's a lot of loads and a lot of miles and a lot of trips. We're in at six o'clock your time, okay? If Dwayne wins this bid okay, too, he'll have plenty to crow about. Meanwhile, in Hay River, rookie co-pilot Tyler Sipos is getting ready for his return flight to Yellowknife. What we plan to do is pack around it and crawl through it. Can't go over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like a little heavy. On the flight down, he landed the DC-3 like a natural. But the plane was empty. Holy dishwasher. You had, oh. 6,000 pounds of freight. It changes pretty, pretty drastically. I've never flown fully loaded takeoff or landing. He'll get his chance right now. See you later, bye. Ball movement now, tail to near 360. Baller movement. Taking off in a fully loaded aircraft, it felt, I don't know, it felt different. It, it can't explain it, but you know that it's loaded. Baller movement. The tail is slower to come up, the acceleration is slower, popping off is slower, You're using up more runway. On our way. Put your nose down, you're heavy, go get to the speed. Once in flight, Tyler cruises easily for 45 minutes. But the real test is about to come. Sounds good. Go ahead and three, three. There is a little bit of added pressure after the really good landing that I had in Hay River. Stepping right along up here, you got a tailwind here, so okay. we're going to have to pull back and pull her down. I had a tailwind on approach. I didn't re recognize, so I had to dump all my flaps. Dump them all? Yeah, you're going to have to dump them all. Yeah. Here they come. Right there. The DC-3's flaps create drag, helping to slow the plane. I had to climb in order to get all the flaps out, in order to descend. Devin saw it coming, but he wanted me to learn from it. Just hold 95. To get the plane in a better approach position, Devin takes control. I got it for a second. You got it? Well, he just kind of put it into a little slide slip, which kind of turns the aircraft, puts more surface area into the wind, more drag. You descend a little bit quicker. Then Devin hands control back to Tyler. Start flying her there now. Got lots of rental. So fly her down. Look at the end of the rental. Look at the end. There you go. Pull back. It's a bouncy landing, but safe. And he wasn't too bad. Not like the first one, but wasn't too bad. Unlike earlier in Hay River, Devin has plenty to say about this landing. Yeah, so you probably should have got your gear out a little earlier. Oh, OK, yeah. You didn't quite see that you had 15 on the tail. Yeah, OK. This thing doesn't like that. Tyler still has a lot to learn. Everybody that's come out of Buffalo, as far as I know, are great pilots. And I hope to be one of them. In Resolute Bay, Dwayne keeps a close check on the weather report. He's waiting out a blizzard that's preventing the Electra from going to alert. 
I was proactive and always on the phone to alert saying, you know, hey, the weather's clearing up. Awesome. Razor, Uber. Let's roll. They got, they're good. Let's roll. And they're going to have air starter and ground power for you. We're going to be airborne in 30 minutes. No. I don't. Give me a dollar a minute for every minute over 30. Okay. Outside, Dwayne's ready to roll. The weather is good. We're trying to go to alert right now. But the crew is missing in action. Sean is still printing the flight plan. Go, 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 go. Well, they should be ready at all times. So this explains that. I got a bet with Ray we could be airborne in 30 minutes, but now they're dragging their feet to make sure they're not. I got 30 minutes. That's going to cost me. When you're in a, a contract situation, you're waiting in a blizzard, you have to be alert and ready. But Dwayne failed to take into account the APU, which starts the Electra's engines. The APU in that particular airplane is in the rear baggage compartment. It's on a slide that comes outside. And the baggage compartment is really not that well insulated. They'll take all day. Sitting idle for hours and 20 below, the APU is frozen solid. For the temperatures we were working in, they had to heat it with a Herman Nelson heater. And that will take time. After rushing the crew, Dwayne now has them waiting on the tarmac. In Resolute Bay, Buffalo manager Dwayne Hicks is trying to get the job done. The weather has cleared and alert for now. And he has one more load to pick up there. We're going to be an hour before we get in here. That's what we were predicting in the first place. An hour better. Dwayne made a bet with electric captain Ray Weber. Uh, we're looking at 20 bucks here now. That they would be in the air in half an hour. Whoa. Well, from five after. The uh, half hour would have been 35, and we're coming up on coming up on 55. That's 20 bucks. They're already 20 minutes over because Dwayne neglected to factor in the time to warm up the plane's auxiliary power unit, or APU. While waiting on the APU, Dwayne gets the news he's been hoping for. I was awarded another contract today, a real big one and it's uh, flying Trenton twice and Greenwood twice up to Resolute here. And he's planning to do things differently. I will not use this crew. I have nothing against Ray, Sean, or Luby. I, I really like those guys. But this past two trips opened my eyes of what this program needed. And they needed a second crew. But Dwayne hasn't told this crew. It'll be dark by the time we get there and then your lights will work. Finally, the APU is warm enough to start. Clear on the left. 60 feet from my wheel. As the Electra takes off for alert to pick up the last load of this contract, Dwayne already has the second crew in training for the next one. The new crew is in Seattle, Washington. This is cool, look at this. See, this This is the runway. We're gonna go under the runway. Before he left Yellowknife, Dwayne handpicked three of Buffalo's young guns to join the Electra program as co-pilots. Justin Simley, AJ DeCoste, and Scott Blue. I think they're a little bit more on the same wavelength with Dwayne that we gotta get the job done. Go ahead and do your, your lights test to make sure you got all your lights. The intention was that, uh, that AJ and I would go on the airplane as first officers initially, and uh, Scotty would uh, go on as a second officer. So now if that's working, we should look for what? When you throw the switch, what are you expecting to see? The airplane itself is more complex than what they've been flying up to now, and the systems are much, much more complex. Is that your sequence? Not quite right. No. That's why we turn the button off, then put the power levers up. But the simulator is only one phase of their training. OK, he's seeing it rotating, and you're. If he's going to get them to fly his big new contract, Dwayne needs the pilots back in Yellowknife to finish in-flight testing. We're awarded this thing last minute, but I mean, there's time constraints on it, too. So we've got to get moving. Back 
from Resolute, Dwayne is rushing to get everything ready for his new half million dollar electric contract with the military. We're moving a building, they're going to construct a warehouse. We're moving the concrete, the rebar, the steel, everything with the Electra. And it's scheduled to leave in just two days. We got a job Thursday. This Thursday, the LBA's gone. Won't be back for two weeks. Dwayne's bringing in big contracts, but Joe's concerned about how he's quoting them. Yeah, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do a recap on these trips to see yeah. if, uh, if we're quoting them properly and if we're, if we're recovering what we quoted. In the north, potential weather delays must be factored in to every quote. This is the first time I've seen this when you came. Before that, it was always, every quote we did was at our cost. Just can't, we cannot quote against Mother Nature. Is it a problem that I bring in? It's like it's such a lucrative contract. Like, I don't know what the problem might be if there even is one. I don't know. Hang on. Budgeting for the unpredictable is one thing. But soon, another delay catches Dwayne off guard. Unbelievable. The new Electra crew is delayed on their return from Seattle. Later. Just can't deal with it. And it just puts us in a bind. Now I got to got to be down to Trenton Thursday. We should be out of here Thursday, which is tomorrow. And uh, I'm going to have one PPC ride done. I can't keep telling my client no, 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 no. If the pilots don't get back soon, Dwayne could lose this half million dollar contract. The hell do you think I am today? I'm freaking. Buffalo's Electra crew in training returns to Yellowknife. They've lost a full day. We knew we had some serious training to do when we got back to Yellowknife. Hey, how you doing? Buffalo has brought in Electra pilot Brian Harrison to captain the mission, but he also needs to be recertified. And now there's no time to get AJ or Justin the flying hours they need. So basically, now we had to substitute Sean Berry back in as a co-pilot with Scott and, and Brian. The pilots are ready to begin training, but the Electra is not even out of the hangar. And then this. Steal it! Oh, come on now. Watch it go. Run right over his foot. Now we'll just get the other tug. <laughs> Even with two tugs, they still can't get the Electra moving. There's no room in Dwayne's plan for any more delays. We're gonna get out of here. We gotta get four hours on that airplane right away. This fucking door takes all day, eh? It's beyond a time constraint. Where we are now, we're in the tank. Finally, the plane is ready to go. Now I gotta pull a rabbit out of my hat and figure out how we're gonna get this done. I gotta talk to you about spring training. We have to do it. It's we have nobody else. But in his rush to get everything done in time, Dwayne missed a critical step. No, but what Dad was told, this was never in my budget this year. What am I budgeting? He didn't clear the cost of the training flights on, with Joe. I think what I said to you is the actual cost on the airplane is five thousand dollars an hour. That's twenty thousand dollars. There's forty left over to buy the. Where did he come up with this five thousand dollars? That's what Forbes said. The fuel is five. Now. It's not the airplane and the crew. If Joe doesn't approve the training costs, Dwayne's contract with the military could come crashing down like a house of cards. A little more than that. I, I'll blow 100 grand here the way you're talking. Yes. Or, yes. But what I want is, is somebody give me a piece of paper and say, Joe, that's what you got. Then I can accept it. But to think you're bringing in a new crew who's never been on this thing and not really cost Buffalo Airways anything is not really right either. But now, whatever the cost, there's no turning back. Yeah, then get the first airplane out. I don't see, if we can get him, I don't see any reason Right now, the party's being threatened on time. If we can get this scenario done, we can go. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. See that movie guy?
Finally, Scott and Brian climb into the Electra. The airplane never got airborne until almost noon. They had lost another four hours, lost 24 hours, plus add four more. Their training flights must be completed by the end of the day. If Dwayne's going to meet his deadline with the military. Just started blasting around you all night. Different approaches and power settings and just trying everything out. It was great for me because I then I could take the, everything I learned in the ground school, compound what I learned in the sim, and then into the plane and put it all together. After hours of flying, the Electra returns. I was feeling finally a little bit of satisfaction. You know, everybody's trained, everybody's complete. It's past midnight. Electra pilots Brian and Sean prepare the flight plan for Trenton. Sean wasn't Dwayne's first choice as co-pilot, but Dwayne did get the engineer he wanted. This is too much. I'm all stressed out. Adam Smith. Adam kind of grows on you. He's, he, I know he's been around the company and people have their opinions of him, but they can't ask for a better guy. You know, he'll take something apart and fix it. But Adam wonders about Dwayne's ambitious plan. Dwayne's making a lot of promises that are very, very hard to meet. The Electra will fly 3,000 kilometers to Trenton, Ontario tonight, then bring building supplies from there to Resolute Bay. Then they shuttle loads of concrete from Greenwood, Nova Scotia. The total distance flown on this job could exceed 50,000 kilometers, more than one full trip around the world. Rock and roll, boys. Yeah. Good night, yellow knife. To meet the contractual deadline, the Electra must be in Trenton tomorrow morning. Adam, you doing a little pin collection? I got this one. I got this one. One, two, three. 12.42, almost 1 o'clock in the morning. We're out of here. We are gone to go to work and make this company a lot of money. Finally. I'm going to make my deadline because I like to, you know, do what I say and like to come through with my word. Plane was loaded. Plane was fueled. We we're all keen and ready to get going on this adventure of ours. It seems as though Dwayne has conquered every obstacle in his way. But then... We sent Adam back to the back of the airplane to flash up the APU to get things moving, and Adam goes to start it. Dead. No go. What the hell? Impossible. Impossible. There's just no power coming up there whatsoever. It's just stupid. It's 1 a.m. A Buffalo Airways Electra sits on the tarmac. But it should have taken off a long time ago to meet a strict deadline on a major military contract. We go to fire up the APU and it won't start. No auxiliary power, can't go anywhere. It's just not gonna happen. The APU that powers up the plane is dead. Couldn't even get the lights on to say that it wanted to work, let alone actually work. It didn't do anything. Dwayne promised the Canadian military that tomorrow morning the plane would be at their Trenton, Ontario base, 3,000 kilometers away. The biggest thing that was on my mind is I've got to make the call. You know, we're not going to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning like I promised. Control panel. But there's still a slim chance if they can fix the APU problem quickly. Something in here. Let me try this. No, that didn't work. There's no reason to kick it. It's just frustration. I think Dwayne was ready to pull his hair out. He was under a lot of stress. I think we're day for the night. Pretty 
much. That still's the bad news. This f***ing day I got it. What's the bad news? This whole f***ing deal. This is bullshit. We'd be in a lot of trouble here. We'll get it fixed. No, we won't. In the dark hangar, Dwayne is defeated. I'm sitting there going, okay, here goes my deadline. What am I gonna do? But Scott has a plan. Luby, it's Scott, how are you? Well, He's calling okay. Buffalo engineer Luby Lubash, the man who helped build the APU. Uh, we can't get the uh, APU to start, can't figure it out at all. Um, I can come pick you up right away. Inside the Electra, Adam is making progress. Look, what did I say? Battery master right next to the starter. Well, that's a starter relay, OK. Adam's keen, and he's going to keep at it. He's not going to stop until he figures it out. And as Scott heads back to the plane, found it. The circuit breaker was popped. That's okay. a good thing to know. What a stupid spot for a circuit breaker. Luby's coming. Huh? Luby's coming. I got it figured out. There's a full circuit breaker. That's it? Yeah. There we go, we got power again. Sitting there in the hangar floor and all of a sudden he comes in. Adam found the damn circuit breaker. I'm gonna get a felt pen and mark it on the outside. If there's a circuit breaker in here, mother You got no power, try this. Five total minutes, every, that door was closed and the thing was running. <laughs> we were starting engines, so it was good. Adam's never say quit attitude has saved Dwayne's skin. For now. It was down to the wire, but one of the biggest contracts in Buffalo's history is finally underway. Now, Dwayne must make good on what he promised the client. Everything. Maybe even his future at Buffalo is riding on it. Sean Mike's going fast. <laughs> well, let's get down a couple of speed bugs in the plane, don't you think? And you're probably going to be right. <laughs>